Okay, so here's video nine in our series of playing in Open G Tuning. And at last, we're getting to use a slide. So first of all, you need to go and buy a slide. Don't be tempted to use a bit of copper piping that you've sawn off and smoothed down. It won't work. Well, it will, but it won't be very good because the surface of a slide has got to be mirror-like. It's got to be absolutely no scratches, no blips, nothing on there because imagine you're going to slide up these strings. So it's got to be like a mirror, really. The, the surface has got to be perfect. So go and buy a slide. And the slide that I'm going to suggest that you buy is Perspex or Glass, okay? Now, you, they come in different sizes, different heights. So some of them only go over two joints of the finger. Some of them are really small. What you want is something that will go over the whole length of your finger, like I've got there. And the finger that you're going to use is going to be either the third finger or the fourth. Okay, I'll come to that in a moment. So you want Perspex or glass because it's lightweight. It will give a decent sound and it will be easy to use. They do come in different thicknesses, so just ask for a light one. You, you tell in the, in the you know in the guitar shop or whatever, ask them that the, you, you're just a beginner and you're just starting off. Or if you're going to order online, look for one that's lightweight for beginners. Just nice, light slide and thin. It doesn't, doesn't want to be very thick. Thicker it is, the better it is, really, because you get a better sound. But to start with, you want it thin. Don't worry about if it's too big for your finger. What you can do is what I've done, and that's to put a sleeve inside it. So all I've done there is I've just used bubble wrap, made a tube out of it, stuck it together with sellotape, popped it in the slide so that when I put on my finger, it doesn't fall off my finger, doesn't rattle around. Now, which finger to use now that you've got your slide? And I'll talk about different types of slides in forthcoming videos, different materials, etc., and how why they're a good idea. But we'll start with this. Um, I would suggest you start with it on your third finger. And the reason I'm saying that is that you can use the second and the fourth to grip the slide and keep it steady. And that's what you want to be able to do. No matter what thickness and weight the slide is, it will tend to make your finger want to droop because you're not used to it. It's heavy on, you, on your hand, even if it's lightweight. So you've got to get used to doing it. So bracketing it between those two fingers will help you to keep the slide still. Right, now we've got to come on to the guitar. So uh, when we're doing this, there's a particular technique that you've got to apply. So firstly, let's look at the thumb on the back of the neck. The thumb on the back of the neck wants to go uh, in the back area of the neck there. Okay, so if I turn the guitar around, it's upside down now. But in this back area, there's the middle of the neck there and there's the top of the neck. So it's in this area. So if I put my thumb on, you can see where my thumb is now. Uh, it's on the back of the neck and it needs to run up and down. In fact, what I always say to students is imagine that in that area of the neck, there's a groove and on your thumb, there's a ball bearing and you can push the ball bearing into the groove. You would be able to slide up and down like that. That's what we want to be able to do. Secondly, the thumb doesn't want to be at that angle. A lot of people stretch their thumb out. Well, that's a mistake because look what's going to happen. If I stretch my thumb out... The angle of my hand is at the wrong angle. You have got to keep your hand like that. And the reason you've got to keep it like that is it's got to be parallel with the frets. If it's not parallel with the frets, the, the chord that you're playing or the single note will progressively be going out of tune. If I put the, the slide at that angle, then obviously there, it's going to be in tune. But when I get down to the top string, how much out of tune it is to what it should be so you can't hold it at an angle you've got to hold it absolutely parallel with the frets okay so your thumb on the back of the neck will help you to do that and you can slide up and down so when i do that look when i bring this round, look how my hand is parallel i'll do it the other way look if i put my thumb out like that across the length of the neck look how much of an angle it's at okay so you need to get that right okay having got the, the slide on and having got your angle right with it let's just go from the fifth fret to the seventh and what i'm going to do to minimize the top strings going out of tune is i'm not going to play them i'm only going to play across those and i'll do all four of those six five four and three like that now ideally what you want is you want that note those notes to start with and those notes to finish in tune okay what we don't want is this 
which is so easy to do. And the reason for it is that the slide is at a wrong angle, okay? So once you can do it between frets five and seven, try some other frets, try seven to nine. And notice what I'm doing. I'm playing it at the given fret, pausing a slight second, and then taking it up to there. So it's not moved quickly, it's just there, and then up, or there, and then up, with a tiny little pause, okay? That's what we want to try and do, and use your ear to see that it's in tune, or hear that it's in tune, but also use your eye, sit in front of a mirror, and check that your angle is right, and if it's wrong, correct it, okay? You'll find it hardest to do in the lower frets, because the action is lowest here, and the action is highest up here. So obviously, if I go from... Uh, seven to nine, that may be easier to do. Lastly, you do not press the slide down on the strings. You're not making contact with the fretboard, with the strings, otherwise it ruins it. You're just resting the slide on the strings and then sliding it. So don't worry about things like I've said to you with a D, leaving the bass string open. We can come to that later. I just want you to be able to go from five to seven or three to five. Okay, just try that and, and get it so that the, even if the technique isn't absolutely perfect, just your intonation needs to be right, okay? So that it sounds in tune. So if you wanna practice that, don't worry about vibrato, don't worry about single notes, we'll come to that later. Um, so have a go at that, and uh, I'll see you in the next video where we'll start to apply that technique into our blues pattern, okay? Have fun.